G'day and welcome, my name is Matt, I'm from DIY Data. Um, today we're going to have a look at some of these things. They were sold to me as um, low temperature aluminium soldering or brazing rods. Um, they were, came from eBay, they were really cheap, but uh, we want to test them out and uh, show you guys how they actually go. So they're sold, um, they're sold basically as a, as one of these things, they're um, low temperature brazing rods for soldering aluminium together. These things cost about eight, eight or nine dollars per packet, I think, which is two rods, so that's quite expensive, particularly when you get t 10 of these for three dollars on eBay. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have a play around and see how well they actually perform. So just something like one of these little blow torches should be enough to uh, guess where we're going. Um, you can buy them most hardware stores, they run on camping gas cylinders. Alternatively you can use a um, barbecue gas bottle with a burner or whatever you've got. One of the other things you'll need is a stainless steel um, wire brush. Um, I've had this one for a while but as you can see it looks pretty clean. And then you need the rods. And of course you need a bit of, uh, bit of aluminium or if you're joining two pieces of aluminium. What are your project essentially is what you need. Okay and so before we get started the last thing we need is a pair of safety glasses because whenever you're um, doing anything with potentially molten metal it's always a good idea to protect your eyes. So I'll put my glasses on and uh, let's get started. Okay so what we're going to do here is going to take a piece of uh, scrap aluminium that I've got and um, we just try to melt the rod onto the piece first and just create a puddle. Then once we play around with this, what I, what I want to do is uh, move over to this little uh, cast aluminium hard drive case and fill a couple of holes on that so we can see how it performs on something like a piece of cast aluminium. So with this stuff, first thing, pretty much the key to it is a clean piece of base metal, so a clean piece of aluminium in this case. So that's where the wire brush comes in handy. And you want to brush it. Okay, let's sit that down here for a second. My uh, workpiece is a little bit rickety. So you want to you want to brush it until it's bright bright steel because essentially what we're trying to do here is remove the oxide layer. So we've got that nice and clean now so let's let's have a go. Let's uh, get your get your torch, turn it on. And essentially we just need to heat it up until it melts. What we want to do is get the piece hot enough to melt the rod, but not we're not trying to melt the base aluminium. So we're getting things hot here, hot enough to um, melt the base aluminium. And if you look at this, the rod isn't actually melting. Ideally what we want to do is heat the alloy up and heat the piece of metal that we're trying to join or repair up until we can melt the rod on it. Because as I've discovered, these cheap um, rods from eBay aren't, don't appear to be actual low temperature melting rods, or um, I think it's actually nickel aluminium alloy in um, in these these rods and like your uh, Durafix and stuff. Let's turn this off. So as you can see, I've turned the uh, base metal here to mush. It's solidified again now, but we've just made a mess of it. Um, and these things were kind of getting soft when I put it in the flame, but they didn't actually melt. And that's, uh, 
that was my experience uh, a whole bunch of times. I tried a bunch of different things and I just couldn't get these to melt. And I think these might almost have a higher melting temperature than some of the bits of alloy that I've been trying to uh, repair here. So, yeah, seems to be a little bit of a bit of a failure on these things. So what I think these might actually be are actual uh, TIG filler rods. So it's just a piece of aluminium. It's a certain alloy. Um, you can't really see it. There's no way you'll see this on the camera, but it's stamped with ER 1100. So I'll have to Google that and see what that means. But um, I tried the two, two different set packs that I bought from the same place. One's, what is it, 2.3 mil or whatever. And then the other ones, I think it's 3.2 and 2.5 mil or something of the sizes. And I tried both of them and had similar success or lack of success. And as you can see down here is more molten aluminium. A little bit extra stuff, all the same. But what I want to do now is actually give you a bit of, bit of a demonstration on how this stuff's actually supposed to work. Let's take this little bit of aluminium. What we'll do is we'll clean it up. And I should point out, like if, if you're doing this stuff, it's best to buy one of these stainless steel wire brushes and only use the wire brush for doing this uh, aluminium soldering because it will cause issues if you get this too dirty. So I just, I've just got a little bit of this, um, this burns a rod. I'll go see if I can get that on the screen. If you so you can see it. Is that focus? Yeah, that focus, I think. Um, there you go, there's the uh, bottom label of it. There we go. Um, so that's the, the rods and I've just got a little piece from previous playing arounds with it. So yeah, as I said, key thing is a really clean piece of metal. Then we get our torch going again. And we want to get things nice and hot, but not so hot that it melts like it did last time. As you can see already, this stuff is um, it's already plenty hot enough to you know, keep this metal on here, but um, it's only taken a few minutes and it's already hot enough to melt this rod onto our uh, piece of metal. And when, you, when, you, when you're joining these things, you want to um, move the rod kind of scraping along the bottom of the the aluminium because the idea here is to make sure there's no alloy there's no oxidization on the piece of base metal so now we've seen seen how it works do another one running through on um, on this old computer hard drive so we can see it up close so yeah first first piece of um, prep now your main piece of prep with this stuff it's always going to be the wire brush on your piece of steel so this might take a little bit longer than the um, than our previous test because it's quite a big piece of aluminium and aluminium tends to suck the heat away pretty easily but yeah you you want to keep an eye on these things and while you're heating it up occasionally you rub your uh, piece of brazing stick on the surface you're trying to solder to or brace to to make sure you don't get things so hot that it starts falling apart like we had with these bits.
See how we're going here. Not quite. Not even close to be honest. Need a bit extra heat going in. So when you're doing this, it's a good idea to move the heat around and not just focus it in one spot. Aluminium is a really good heat conductor, so it, you don't even need to heat the direct area. You can heat kind of to the sides of it, and that'll uh, also help with your oxidization not building up. So what we don't want to do here as well is to melt the rod with the flame. We want to use the molten, um, the, the heated piece of metal to melt it. This is getting a little bit uh, short and it's getting hot in my fingers so what I'll do is I'll hold it in my pliers. It's getting close, I think, but it's still not quite there. As you can see, on a um, larger piece of metal, it can take a piece a lot longer to get it up to heat. And here we go. Yeah, we go. Look at that magic. Once you get up, it'll just perfectly start pulling like that. And I, I do have a stainless steel scribe that I use sometimes to help me with this stuff, but I'll try with one of these rods. It might not work. You just want to scratch up the bottom of the hole as best you can to get the best surface of the join and as you can see even with the uh, good molten stuff it's still not melting our cheap rods there we go we have a little hole field so there you go you can see that uh, the genuine um, Aluminium braze rods did a lot better than the cheaper ones, which is quite disappointing because these literally were two dollars each for a pack of ten. Two, I think it was two dollars something for the smaller ones, and then the thinner ones were uh, the thicker ones were about three dollars. Um, maybe I'll try again, see if I if I'm a bit more careful whether there are actually people on eBay that sell these things that are actually these things, but. Um, my first experience with them is that these from eBay are TIG filler rods, I think, even though they might say low temperature melting, can't remember exactly what it said, but yeah. Be cautious, but as you can see, if you go buy some expensive ones, it's not too difficult to fix holes in some aluminium or even joining a couple of pieces of aluminium or something shouldn't be too much more difficult. You just need to heat things up, make sure you uh, have the uh, base metals clean with your piece of, with your wire brush. Then you just need to heat it up until you get your, um, your rods to melt. All right, well, hopefully I've demonstrated how your cheap packets of um, eBay rods aren't actually the same as these things. They might say they are, but and some of them on eBay might be, I'm not sure. I haven't found some actual working ones of these yet, although I've only bought two packets of them from the same place. Um, but if you do want to repair aluminium castings or join a couple of pieces of aluminium and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on buying a MIG welder capable of doing that or thousands of dollars on a TIG welder. Give these things a go. You might have some success. Buy a couple of packs though. You'll want to play around like I did here to get comfortable with heating them up with and uh, not turning things into goo. So that's it for me today. Um, hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you learned something. 
and I'll hopefully see you again next time.